Hello everyone, my name is Prashant and the, in the first two part of the series, you have seen about what Packer exactly is, how to install it, uh, the builder section and now look at one other important critical section of the Packer template which is called provisional. Okay, so here I have mentioned that Packer template has three main parts. I forget to wrote it down here but it has three main parts first one is builder okay which lets you define your image the second one is called provisional provisioners okay provisional so so far we have created an image which is a kind of a bare bone image we have just taken some source AMI and using that source AMI, we have created our own AMI out of it, which is of no use, right? So what provisional will do, it will let you customize your image. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you uh, on the top of this image, whatever the base image which we are choosing, this base source AMI. We want to install some packages. Okay, so for that purpose, we can use something called shell provisional. Or let's say we want to upload some file. So we want that whenever this AMI comes up, it has some uh, file uploaded to it, or it has some of my own customized file that I can do with the help of file provisional. Or let's say we, I already have some configuration management system running on my organization, config management system. Okay, like Chef or Puppet or, or uh, Ansible. Okay, I want to use their existing configurations. Okay, um, not existing configuration. For example, in uh, Ansible, we already have those YAML files written. Okay, which is a playbooks. So I want to use those existing playbooks that I can do with the help of those Ansible local provisional. Okay. So basically the work of a provisional is let you customize your image. Okay. So let's see this in action, how to do that. So in order to do that, let's go back here, go to this. Okay. And in order to define a provisional, what exactly you need to do? You need to define something called provisioners. Okay. Once again, it's an array. So for example, the, the type is, like I mentioned, let me start with the shell provision. Shell. Okay. And once the AMI is up, I want to run something called packer.sh script. And let me define that script, which is going to be a really simple script. Its name is packer.sh and it's going to use bin bash. Okay, let me put it in debug mode. It is not required, but let me put it right. Bin bash. Wow. And what the script is going to do is sudo yum hyphen y install HTTP. Okay, that's it. It's going to install this package on the top of the image. So like I mentioned, so far we are just using the bare bone image. Now what we are doing, we are customizing the image according to our requirement. Okay. So now before doing that, let me validate packer.json and I'm doing it for JSON, but as you know, the syntax is almost similar in case of SCL. So let me show you. Mm, JSON. Okay, let me share this.
so not this one not even this one like this so in SCL you need to define provisional equal to shell and script whatever the script you want to run okay and same thing we are defining in case of JSON okay. so now this one now we have validated the JSON file right our packer.json and in order to build it packer build packer.json okay the process is going to be same the only difference you will see is that you will see that packer is going to install or packer is going to run the script so once the ami is up you should have the apache installed in it okay so let's wait for the instance to be up and once the instance is up you will see that packer is going to install the ami oh sorry apache package I don't know why I'm saying AMI, but it's going to install the Apache package. So as you can see, it's provisioning the shell script packer.sh. Okay. And now it's installing the that Apache package. And once this is done, it is going to stop the instance. And once the instance stop, it's going to create the AMI out of it. Okay. Uh, shell provide one more type of useful uh, it means in shell it provides one more option is called inline so what exactly you can do that rather than providing the script let me show you how to do that so type okay type is again going to be shell in case you have like a one liner command like we have run right now what you can do you can specify something called inline and what this inline is going to do sudo yum hyphen y install http same thing but it's just one one inline command that you are you want to run okay so i will show you how to use this inline parameter in your script but just want to throw this idea this guy okay. now we have looked one kind of provisioner which is the shell provisioner and we have specific we have seen like how to run the script as well as the inline command the next type of provisioner i want to show you is called the file provisioner so we have seen uh, how to do like install package with the help of shell provisioner this is not only for installing package but if you want to run any of the command okay any of the shell command or any of the shell script second one is let's look at the uh, let's say i want to upload some file when the uh, my ami is uh, is created so let's say let's create a file html file i will say index.html title is this is coming from packer. packer okay and in the body let me use h1 and the same thing this is coming from packer. okay now in order to upload this file inside your image what exactly you need to do you need to do something called type is equal to file right? and in the file provisioner you need to define source okay and destination okay now remember one thing in uh, like for example i want to let let me type this first so my source is index.html and my destination is going to be where.www.html but remember one thing first thing is 
when you want to specify this destination, please make sure you specify this whole path that you want to copy this file inside this where.html and inside the HTML directory, not within this where.dev directory. So specify this complete path. Secondly, when this packer is going to run and is going to connect, it is running as an EC2 hyphen user. And EC2 user don't doesn't have a permission to write inside this where.dev HTML. So what you can do you can specify tmp slash okay once again you must need to specify slash so that it will copy the file inside slash not in the one level above which is going to be root now as we know every time we are going to reboot an instance all the content inside the tmp will be wiped out so what we can do like few minutes back we have discussed about the shell provision right shell and we have talked about something called inline. So what we can do inline sudo cp or we can even do move tmp index.html to where www.html. Okay. That so this this is how we can use that inline provision here. Okay. I think this looks good. I have closed all those. Now let me run packer. First me let me run packer validate and packer.json. So it looks good. And then packer build packer.json. Okay. It's going to follow the same process. Let me cancel this and I want to show you that debug feature. And if you're going to cancel the build, as you can see, it is terminating that source instance and within that control C, it's going to wipe out everything. I mean, whatever the temporary key, temporary security group it has been, it has created. Okay, so let this to be cleaned out. Actually, it's waiting for that. Yeah. So now what I want to show you is something called hyphen debug. Okay. So like I mentioned, when you are going to use a debug flag at each and every step, it is going to ask you whether you want to go ahead with this step or not. Okay. So this is the use of a debug flag. If you are debugging something. Okay. Once again, it is like, for example, it's validated. This AMI exists. Then this guy, network info, key pair. Okay. Whether you want to create that, whether you want to temporary this, 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 this. Okay. Now, if you go here, this LTR, you will see that it has created this temporary key. EC2 EPS BAM and SSH I EC2 Amazon EBS spam EC2 hyphen user at the rate okay I can go this copy this go back to my AWS console this guy click on this Okay. See, I I can I will be able to uh, access to this particular instance. So if you if you are looking for some debugging option, for example, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Okay, now it's stalling. So during that this process, I want to see. I, RPM QA if it's actually installing the package or not. So see, it's actually installed the package. Now this one. Now I want to see if the file is copied or not. So see, file is copied. 
and that's what this debug provisional helpful for example i forget to give this slash option here okay then you will see the error let me show you that let me come out of this okay come out of this and let me press control c again okay it's going to terminate the instance and let let me do one thing let's say i forget to give this a slash after tmp let this instance to be terminated okay we need to wait for this instance to be terminated okay now this is terminated so let me run the same script again using the debug flag again we are going to do this 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 okay and once again it's going to create the key right but obviously this time it's going to be a different instance and it's going to have a different uh, ip address assigned to it so you see pending and this time the ip address is this 69 as Amazon is going to assign these IP from its global pool. I think it's not up yet. Yeah, it's waiting for instance to become ready. Okay. Installing the Apache package. Okay. Yes. And this time, as you can see, that index.html is missing because after slash tmp, we are missing that slash. So, I mean, these are all the great way to debug these kind of issues okay to see if the file is actually been uploaded or not okay so it has mentioned that provisioning step has error running the cleanup provisional if present okay so i mean yeah i know it's not very intu intuitive but you will get some idea like okay your step uh, you can assess to that instance using that key and you will verify that if the files are actually present or not okay so except for that there is something called a breakpoint provisional i haven't explored much about it but i find that um, there are some users who use this breakpoint provisional and i mean the main point is it's independent from debug flag but i haven't used it much so please try to use it and let me know in the comment section how it goes but thanks once again for watching this video if you have any question please mention in the comment section i will try my best to answer those okay thanks once again